What's up everyone? In today's video, we are going to be covering airbrush style designs. So this is something that you guys have requested and I'm gonna do my best to create a graphic that looks like it's been airbrushed using only the effects that are available inside Photoshop. Let's go. What's up everyone? So first and foremost, I wanna say thank you to all the new subscribers that are here. Thank you to everyone who has been subscribed. Um, it really means so much that you guys are a part of this channel and watching these videos. I think as of now, we're almost to a thousand subscribers on this channel. So that's super awesome and I'm just blown away by how much this channel has grown and I only have you guys to thank for that, so thank you. Uh, today's video is going to cover a topic that has been highly requested. It is the sort of bootleg airbrushed style of graphic. So this is something that you know, you'll know you see at state fairs or you'll see in flea markets, there'll be someone set up airbrushing uh, t-shirts by hand. And so this is gonna be an interesting one because I'm not an illustrator. So I basically am going to try to create this style using photos. And I thought this might be good because I know a lot of you guys might also not be illustrators and you may not have the budget to you know, hire a professional um, airbrush artist to do these graphics for you. So we're gonna try to basically get to a place where we've created a very similar effect just using effects inside Photoshop. So without further delay, let's jump into my computer and see what's going on. So right now I just have pulled up uh, airbrushed wrap shirt on Google. Um, you know, I just, I Googled that because we're gonna be dealing with like music related stuff. And I wanted to show you guys um, a really good example here. This is the In Loving Memory Don West shirt that I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen. Um, you know, came out a few years ago, Robert Kardashian there on the back. It was, um, it is still super popular. Um, so that's a really great example. A lot of times these shirts are used in that way to like, you know, pay tribute to someone who has passed away, whether, you know, it's a family member or a music artist or anything like that. Um, so this is a really great way to pay tribute to, um, you know, people in that way. So this is actually the example we're gonna use today. Oh, here's a Wu-Tang one too. That's pretty dope. Um, this is the example we're gonna use, um, Aaliyah. Um, this is legitimately who I had in mind when I thought of doing one of these tutorials. Um, just because, you know, I don't know. I think she's like the perfect artist and she's got, I know some really great photos out there and uh, it's just, I don't know. I think it's perfect for this style. So um, basically what I did was pulled that um, shirt into Photoshop and I just tried to, to create something very similar using this uh, photo because this is an actual photo that was used here. Um, so this is what I came up with. So you can see the, um, you know, the airbrush text style is, is very similar to this. Um, you know, I was able to add like little accents, like the sort of bling sparkle effect on her jewelry. Um, I was able to create a, a sort of fuzziness and, and soften up the photo quite a bit to make it look more airbrushed. And, um, you're going to see in this tutorial that using um, the blur tool a lot and using the brush tool um, along with it is gonna be super crucial. So basically what we're gonna do from here is I want to start from scratch and create another Alia um, bootleg t-shirt using another photo from this series, like from this photo shoot. So I just went on Google and I found another picture, you know, that's obviously from the same photo shoot. So. We're just gonna pull this into Photoshop, start from scratch and, and see what happens. So first things first, we got a new document going, 15 by 25, resolution 300. I got the background contents set as white. Uh, I think this is actually gonna be the first tutorial I've done you doing it on a white shirt. So yeah, something different. So I'm gonna hit Command A so I can grab this whole image go back over to our canvas, hit command, whoops, ugh. jump the gun there. <laughs> I gotta hit command C after I've grabbed this whole image. So command A, command C, come over to New York, into our canvas, 
Command V. Guys, I uh, just drank a big cup of coffee, so that might be one reason why I'm fucking spazzing out a little bit. All right, so we've got our uh, image that we're working with into, into our canvas. We probably want it to be a little bit smaller. There we go. So the first thing we're gonna do is um, get rid of like these hard edges around the outside. So I'm not gonna use like an inner glow or grading or anything to do that. Because the background of the photo essentially is already white, you should just be able to use like brightness and contrast and just up the brightness a bit, up the contrast as well so we don't um, lose some of the definition in the features of the photo and just sort of get it to a place where, um, you know, that there's a, a, a white background that blends in seamlessly to our, our background. So that's looking pretty good there. All right, so I feel good about that. Um, I see a few places where there's still like hard edges, like right there and then right here, a, just a little bit. It's like barely noticeable, but it's just a little tiny thing. So I'm just gonna use the eraser tool, eraser tool, brush that out, brush this down here so it's a little bit more, um, a, little, a little smoother, I guess, and like a better transition. So the next thing I'm gonna do is create a um, smart object out of this. So you just right click on this layer, convert to smart object. And this is basically so we can apply some effects. And if we need to, we can go back to this, this original photo. Actually, now I'm seeing, I should fix this too. This is a very small, there we go. Sorry, okay, convert to smart object. And then I'm going to create a gradient on the bottom so that we can lose this hard edge that's you know sort of throwing things off. So I've got, white selected over here on the little swatch panel. And we're just gonna double click the layer, gradient overlay, and uh, looks like I already have 90, 90 um, percent, or 90 degrees rather, geez. 90 degrees <laughs> as the angle, so that's uh, getting a, a nice white gradient on the bottom there. Can mess with the scale a little bit, but it was it's already pretty close to what we need. So we just want you know to have a nice um, transition there. I don't want to get too much into her hand and like have that be white at all. So yeah, that feels pretty good. A little, yeah, okay. So I'm good with that. So from here, I'm actually also going to change the hue of her skin. Um, and the only reason I'm doing that is because in my mind, the colors of this design are going to be like pink and purple and like some pastels and so I want the the hue of her skin to be leaning a little bit more towards like red and pink just to sort of um, I guess be more more cohesive with that color palette I have in mind it's just it's just like a stylistic choice so you know if you would plan on using more oranges and blues or things like that it might look better if you tone her skin just a little bit um, more yellow um, yeah, but in this case, we're going to go towards red just a tiny bit there minus four. Yeah, that'll do it. Okay. So from here, I'm going to, um, soften the skin just a little bit. Cause as you can see, obviously like the photo to begin with isn't super high resolution. So it's expected that, you know, it's going to be a little bit grainy when you zoom in here. Um, it's not going to be the highest of resolution. So. What we're gonna do is just add a little Gaussian blur and we're gonna be using Gaussian blur a ton in this tutorial, so uh, get used to it. So we just wanna apply this over the whole image and we don't want too much because we still want all of her features to be like defined, you know, so um, you can still tell who the photo is and stuff, um, but we just want a little, just soften it up just a little bit. So we could probably just call it three that looks pretty good. Okay, so it's a little bit softer now. And then from here, I'm going to duplicate our original layer. And then, and then on this top layer, I'm gonna add another Gaussian blur, but this time we're gonna like make it way more intense so that, um, you know, you can still sort of see your features, but they're like pretty blurred. I mean, we could probably just jump it right to like 30 pretty good maybe 20 let's see what 25 looks like 
Yeah, I think 30 works. Okay. So now that we've got this layer, we're going to change the blend mode over here to overlay. And basically this is just softening the entire image as a whole and adding sort of like, honestly, like sort of like an angelic sort of like glow to the image, right? So you can see how much of a drastic change that uh, that makes. And we do lose a little bit of detail, but in my opinion, it's fine because it is meant to look like sort of loosely airbrushed. So, um, you know, having every single little tiny detail in there is not necessarily the best thing anyways. So now we've got our two layers here. We've got our over overlay um, layer at the top and then our original like sort of slightly blurred photo um, underneath it. I'm just gonna hit shift and click um, both of these so that they're they're both highlighted and, the, and then do command G to group them together. And with this group, I'm right away gonna duplicate it hitting command J. And that's just so we have this um, that we can go back to at any time. And this is just sort of like a, you know, I guess a workaround for not being super destructive in your design process. So you can always jump back to this if you wanna, um, you know, start from the beginning again, you know, basically. So now we've got our group that we copied, right? I'm gonna just merge it together because the effects that we're gonna, we're gonna um, apply to this image from here, um, we don't really need to worry about like, you know, trying to make any um, additional adjustments to the to these layers. So we've got our our grouped and uh, merged image here and basically from here I'm gonna try to add some sort of painterly effect to the image. So this is this was basically a matter of me going into filter and um, filter filter gallery and I basically just tried a few of these um, options under the artistic uh, dropdown at the top. And I found that using paint dubs worked best. Like I tried all of these out and this was the thing that in my opinion got me closest to where I wanted to be. Um, and so the settings that I'm using are the brush size at 20, sharpness at zero because we want to maintain the sort of soft look to it. So we don't want to add any sharpness to the to the paint um, effect. And then paint brush is sparkle, which is the very last option. So those are, those are the settings that I'm using for this. Okay. Click OK. And so now we see we're going from this where it's clearly a photo to this, which is a little bit more, you know, literally like it says, like, artistic um, and it looks more like it has been painted. So from here, we can start to get into the text itself because that is really, you know, when the average person looks at the design, that's what's gonna right away make them think, oh, that's like an airbrush t-shirt. Like the text is, you know, half the battle, if not more than half the battle. So um, what I did, to select what kind of text I was gonna use was I just jumped over to defont.com. It's basically like um, really like the best font resource on the internet, in my, in my opinion. It's the one I've used the longest. It's I think the most well-known one. Um, and while it might be like your first instinct to go to script and brush because we're doing an airbrushed style design, um, I think what's gonna work better is using calligraphy um, as opposed to brush because we're actually gonna apply some effects to the font inside Photoshop that is going to make it look, look like it's brushed. So if we use a brush font in the first place, I think it's gonna take away from sort of the authentic um, look that we're going for. So that's one. And the next thing that I want you guys to also consider when picking out a font is, um, picking out something that's a little bit thinner. Um, if you choose something thick, when you start applying effects to it, like we're gonna apply some outer glow to the text, we're going to um, make it look a lot fuzzier. So if it's a thicker 
um, you know, more bold font to begin with, it's going to start to blow out the, the characters or the letters and it's going to be a lot harder to read. So I would take that into consideration when you're going through here and picking out a font. But other than that, it's just a, a matter of, you know, what looks cool to you. Um, you know, I found like, let's look at this example. This is a pretty, you know, honestly, relatively like basic font, though the Y stylistically is pretty cool. Again, though, this is a, um, this is a hand drawn font. This is, so it's not a font, it's just hand drawn text, right? So that's sort of what I took into consideration when I chose this, which I believe is Cinderella and that's on here somewhere. Um, yeah, right there. So I think for, for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just going to use the same font because I think it worked really well, but I'm going to show you guys how I applied some of these effects to it. Right? So let's go back to our canvas here and, um, I'm just going to type out Alia using the Cinderella font. Okay, so right off the bat, does not look airbrushed at all, right? So that's the cool thing about, um, you know, messing around in Photoshop is trying to get things to a place where, you know, you can take, take a design that looks, and I'm just going to add a little bit more of this gradient because it's bugging me. You know, take a font that doesn't look airbrushed at all, and by the end of this, with any luck, it'll look like it is. So, first things first. Let's get this to a place where we're happy with like how the text is positioned. Just like in the other example, I'm going to um, arc it over her head. So we're just going to click up here, this little T, and we're going to warp the text using arch. So I guess we have arc and arch. So we're going to use arch here and arch it up. We're going to probably want to mess with the vertical distortion a little bit. And I think I'm ultimately going to end up warping this text um, a little more to like be more cohesive with this photo. But um, yeah, we'll get to that when we get to it. So for now, I'm basically just trying to get this to a place where, you know, it works well with the photo. It's got a nice arc to it. It's still, you know, readable. I'm not worried about this Y going over her head because I'm actually going to make her head sort of um, poking out over the, the text anyways. So it's okay that it's going over her, her head for now. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. So the next thing I want to do is start adding this glow to the background that you see in the example. So instead of um, a blue, because I don't want to recreate this exact same thing, um, but a really quick way to just sort of see, like if you find uh, another design that you're inspired by and you want to sort of create a similar vibe without like just ripping off the color scheme, a little trick that you can do that usually works is like hit command U on the, on the example layer and just play with the hue and you'll see most likely some other color combinations that will also work. Like if you don't look at this part of the photo and just focus on the text, like you can see there are some other um, colors that would look good. So like for example, we could use this pink and purple because that looks pretty dope. So let's grab, we're gonna use um, the eyedropper tool over here we're going to grab this purple color and then we're going to grab this pink color. And that's what we're going to use in our uh, example. And my computer is making that humming noise that it does sometimes. Shout out to my computer. So let's add this glow. So we're going to do a new layer. We're going to grab our brush here. Going to get our purple queued up. And then we're going to have the brush set to 0% hardness. And then the size, we can probably go up to like a thousand, let's say a thousand forty, right? So it's like somewhat big. Um, again, 
we're gonna be real loose with this and try to just sort of eyeball it the same way you would if you were that person, um, you know, at the state fair um, doing a, a uh, airbrush style shirt. So let's just start drawing this out. And again, just sort of eyeballing it, keeping the, um, the text in mind as well, just so that it, it seems at least, you know, somewhat deliberate. You don't want it to be completely like, just like drawing shit wherever. Just like try to have it make sense with your text, you know. But don't be like, don't, don't be super calculated because I think, um, you know, it's best to keep this real like loose it's gonna it's gonna add to the authenticity if it's a little bit more of a, a loose feeling okay so that's pretty good um we did go over her face a little bit so that's no problem i'm just going to use the eraser tool on that and again just like real loosely like um draw around her her um head here We can always add more um, purple layer, later rather, not layer. Okay, so that's looking good. So now, you know, in the example, the text was white. So first thing I'm gonna do is Command J, duplicate this Aliyah text, and then um, rasterize the type. And then I'm gonna do Command I, so we can quickly invert it, and then one, it's like a small thing here. Actually, first, before we get into that, I want to add a white glow on this text because um, right now we have hard edges on it and that you know doesn't look like it's been airbrushed whatsoever. So let's um, add this uh, outer glow to it. Just an outer glow of white make the opacity 100%. You can keep the um, technique at softer. The range is what we're gonna mess with a little bit because that's basically going to bring the glow closer to the edge. Um, so if you watch like when I put range at 100, it'll make it like super blown out. Um, geez, okay, there's like a weird delay there, sorry. Yeah, so that like blows it out a lot more. It honestly makes it like closer to like this purple um, um, brush brushing that we did. So instead of that, we're gonna bring the range down to let's say like 40 and then just mess with the size so that it's basically just taking the existing um, font and instead of the hard edges, it's making them a little soft, it's making them softer, you know? So this is why I said that it's probably a good idea to use a, a font that's a little bit thinner in the first place, because otherwise, if this was a super thick font, it might start to become unreadable. So just messing with this until we get it to where we like it. I really want to have that soft, brushed quality. So that's pretty good there. Okay, so I feel good about that. I'm actually going to duplicate it again um, because now I wanna rasterize it. And the reason I'm rasterizing it is because um, any place where, um, you know, if you were actually using an airbrush tool, if you were like, if you went off of the A and did this little arm here and went like that with the brush, it wouldn't just come to a, a point right there and stop, right? I mean, it would have it would have a little bit of a trail. So that's what we're gonna do. And let's just look at the example so I can show you guys. Um, see like this Y here trails off. And like, I guess the crossing thing wasn't a great example because I actually did a good job here, but um, you see the, the H sort of like trails off and the Y trails off. So adding those, that little bit of detail will make it look 
more authentic. So to do that, basically I'm just gonna take the eraser tool and just sort of like go to the end of these of these um, these lines, I guess, and like brush them away. So they they sort of fade. I'm not gonna do it there. Just I think I'm gonna do it at like the smaller um, areas or like the thinner areas, right? So like H should be good, we can do that. You can even put like a little bit of a point on it. That'll definitely add to the authentic kind of look. And again, just like being like pretty loose with this, like you could even just like add it a little bit here, you know, up here maybe. Like this is all just like stylistic choices that are like just meant to make it look more like this was done, you know, at some, you know, random flea market in a, in a convention center, um, you know, by someone who's trying to make like a dope shirt, but also just trying to like make 20 bucks or whatever. And uh, yeah, I actually don't know how much people are charging nowadays for airbrush shirts, but anyways, uh, all right, so, this is looking pretty good. We've got this, these sort of trails going. We can probably make this even a little bit more drastic. Not quite that much. Okay. So that's cool, that helped. I think, you know, it's just those small details that when you add them all together, um, will really, help out your, your overall design. Okay, so from here, um, you'll notice that in some of these other examples, let's close this photo. In these other examples, there's like a secondary color, you know, so like there's the, the lighter, like turquoise sort of blue, um, or like an aqua, I guess, and then like a darker blue. Um, same thing with some of the other airbrushed examples that we saw here, kind of the same color scheme. Um, so having that secondary color is definitely something that will make it look more um, in that airbrush style. So we're just gonna add an outer glow. We're gonna use that pink color that we decided to use. And um, the range, we're gonna bump up to 100. So it's a little um, more, it's like, bigger, you know, I guess it's not as um, tight to the letters. And we're just gonna get this to a place where we feel good about it. Notice we're not, in a lot of my tutorials, I'll mess with like the noise, um, but in this, we don't really wanna touch that at all because the purpose of this is to look like real, um, real smooth and, and real like fuzzy and adding noise is, is gonna detract from that. So that's pretty good. I think we're gonna end up adding more purple. So that's no problem. We'll just go down to our purple layer, add a bit, whoops, add a bit more here. Cause we want, you know, that to be like a distinct background. Um, and then our, our pink to be sort of the secondary color for the text. Okay. I'm trying not to go off the canvas. I'm also trying to use the same brush size for this whole thing. So we might actually have to um, make this whole thing a little bit smaller. Just a little bit. See there, you have that edge there that showed up, so that's no good. So let's just, um, yeah, let's just keep that how it is. It's it's fun. So from here, I'm going to bring up um, Alia's like head over the text, like I mentioned. So to do that, I'm just going to grab this uh, rectangular marquee tool and just sort of grab the top half, a portion of the of her image. I'm gonna do Command J, and then I'm gonna throw that layer to the top. 
remove this gradient because we, we don't need that. And then again, I'm just going to use the brush and sort of um, brush up this white here so that it still has that, um, you know, loose sort of quality to it. And it's not like super rigid, rigid and, and cut around her, um, her head here. So. And another little thing that you could do to sort of have this feel like more um, painted is you could like blow out parts of the of the um, photo. So what I mean by that is like add a new layer and you could like use um, a black paintbrush and just like add little bits over here, like add some black there Add some black here. You can already see what's happening here just naturally with the photo, but like if you add some black there, then it sort of, you know, looks like, um, you know, the, the paint sort of went outside and um, bled a little bit into other areas of the, of the paint, of other colors of paint. So just sort of adds a, just a little bit of something extra to it to make it look more of this airbrushed style. Okay, so we've got now a little bit of dimension um, added to the graphic, right? With her, her head sort of um, going over this text. And now from here, and let's get rid of the sun that I love. There we go. So from here, <clears throat> I'm going to show you guys how I did those little um, Kind of bling sparkly things and uh, it's fairly simple but basically um, I just will make a little brush really quick and to do that I just use this um, line tool over here and I've got the weight up here at 10 pixels and I'll just draw a little line that sort of like makes sense with you know how big it's gonna be in the graphics so maybe like that big and then I'll duplicate the line, rotate it. I'm holding down the shift key and just turning it 90 degrees, right? So we've just got a little cross basically there. And then I'm gonna merge the shapes and then I'm gonna use filter. Guess which one? Yep, Gaussian blur. Yep, we can, when this pops up, we can convert to smart object. So that doesn't really matter. Okay, we're gonna say, Maybe like 12, 12 pixels on that blur. And then I'm gonna add a new layer. Well, actually we could just rasterize this layer. Um, so I guess we could have done that in the first place, whatever. So then I'm gonna use the brush tool, circular brush and just add a little dot in the middle. And that's just gonna give us our little like star, right? And then if you wanna take it a step further, you can zoom in and sort of like make these edges a little bit pointier by using the eraser tool. So then you just have like a nice little bling sort of thing there, right? And then once you have that done, use this uh, rectangular marquee tool and grab the whole thing and go to edit, define brush preset. And then see here we've got our brush that we can use. So I'll just call it sparkle brush one. And so now we can um, get rid of that layer and um, add a new layer. Well, I guess we could just use this layer as our sparkle layer now. Um, but then we'll make the brush white and just go in here and um, you know add little sparkles to wherever her jewelry is. And so we've got one there, one on her earring. Um, one thing that you could also do to make you know it a little bit more unique is go to the actual brush panel up here, um, up at the top, and you can rotate it. So you know, just switch up the angle a little bit, and that'll make it you know look a little bit more unique and less like a brush that has been you know used over and over. So just keep changing the angle. 
add it to different elements. Down here. That looks pretty good. And then the other way that you can use that um, brush tool is let's make the angle go, bring the angle back to 90 degrees. And um, you can throw little accents around um, the text. So that's just sort of like something else that will add to sort of the overall graphic, but also just like stylistically add like more details um, to make it more, look more airbrushed. So I'm gonna use this purple color and I'm just gonna go up here and just sort of throw some of these around the text. Throw one down there, throw one up there. And I'm just keeping it the same angle because I don't know, I've in the bootleg examples I've seen, they've used for whatever reason it is for like any accents like this, it's like different angles, but then like for these little accents around the text, it'll be the same angle. So I don't know, it's just something I personally noticed. I could be wrong, but anyways, um, I'm also gonna make some bigger sparkles. So I'm just increasing the brush size. And um, you know, normally this would make it look a lot more blurry, but I'm not really concerned about that because this whole thing looks brushed and blurry anyway. So I'm just gonna throw a few more um, bigger ones around here. And um, as I'm doing this, I'm looking at this text and I can already tell that I'm gonna want it to be fuzzier. So, to do that, what we could do is, and also I'm noticing that this, her her overlap here looks a little too transparent. I must've just like gotten too, a little too loose with that brush. So we're just gonna do that again here. And I'm just gonna, you know, be a little bit more careful just these little tiny things that you got to notice and pay attention to when you're doing this. And, you know, just like any other tutorial that I, I do, um, you know, obviously if I was actually designing this for, uh, you know, Aliyah, I would be way more detailed and um, deliberate on, on everything. But just, you know, for the sake of this tutorial, I'm trying to just get the point across to you guys. Um, as quickly as I can. So this is looking pretty good, but um, like I said, the text, this white text was um, not looking super good to me. It looks, it just needs to be more blown out. So what if we duplicated the text? So this is our layer with the pink glow. And what if on this layer, we added another round of uh, a white glow to it, but like obviously not as big. Bring this range back down. And see there, it's already starting to look. There we go. I just want it, basically I just want it to be like um, on the same level of um, fuzziness is like some of these other elements, but you know, it still needs to be readable. So keep that in mind. So let's see. Yeah. See, just adds a little bit more fuzziness to it. And there's going to be more effects that we're adding to this. So, you know, we're still not done yet. So, you know, we're just going to keep tweaking this until we get it to where we want it. Just moving some of these elements here. Okay, so from here, I would try to apply some effects to the overall graphic and see if we can make it look even more sort of like airbrushed. So I'm gonna grab all the layers and do Command G to group them together. Then I'm gonna duplicate the group just so we have it saved down here. And as a general rule, you should just save the file 
as you're going, obviously, like anytime you make any sort of significant change, make sure you hit save. And I'm going to merge it. Okay. And then let's, um, let's first do the same thing we did earlier and try an overlay. Okay. And now see, you can, you see these edges here. These weird like sort of edges show up. So the remedy for that is um, going to the background layer, hitting command J, and then, you know, we've, you've got your duplicated layer, merge these two together so that when you do the overlay, you don't get the weird um, little hard edges on the side. So you can see this already helps a bit. Um, I think one thing that might work actually better is if we did linear dodge and then we did another big blur. Like the 30 again. And then we decrease the opacity. So there we're sort of losing some of the original colors we use like now they look a lot lighter but I don't hate it and it's something that we could easily fix in a second but I feel like it does now look more blown out and like airbrushed so what would happen if we first I'm going to group these so we have it saved again if we merge these two together and we hit command U and then we increased saturation does that do that up or decrease it? I don't know. I mean, I actually feel like it's pretty good where it is without doing any of that. Uh, yeah, I mean, this definitely has a, a, a bootleg airbrush feel in my opinion. I think I'm still not totally satisfied with the text. Let's see if maybe blurring it again will help. Maybe we could even add like more, what would happen if we added more sparkles to like up here? Yeah, that kind of helps. Just adds a little something else. Make this a little smaller. Yeah, I think that actually helps quite a bit. Yeah, I mean, honestly, that to me looks pretty good. Like I said, you know, for the purpose of this tutorial, um, I, it's hard for me to get into all of the tiny details that I would do from here. Um, you know, there's a lot of other things that you can do to, to, to um, you know, finesse this design a bit more. But um, yeah, the basic point of this tutorial is just to get it across that like, you can sort of get in the realm of bootleg um, airbrushed style designs in Photoshop just using some of these effects. So let's see what this looks like uh, mocked up on shirt. So I'm just going to flatten everything. Command A, grab it, grab the whole image, Command C to copy it. And uh, I just Googled um, oversized white shirt and just grabbed the first thing that looked cool, you know, and this was a pretty solid mock up and just super simple. So. Um, Let's see how this looks. So I hit command J, drop it in, change the blend mode to multiply, convert to a smart object so we can size it down. Let's see how this looks on a shirt. We're gonna want it to be a little bit bigger like a lot of those examples we were looking at. Yeah, I mean, that looks pretty good. I mean, if I, you know, if I were the average person walking by this this shirt, you know, I would say that's definitely airbrushed, you know. So yeah, I mean, as I said, the purpose of this tutorial was basically to show you guys um, how you can get just somewhere close 
to that uh, airbrushed feel inside Photoshop without necessarily being an illustrator. So hopefully some of the techniques that I use in this will you know, help you guys and you can, all, you can always delve into it more and experiment. That is the purpose of this channel is just to get you guys to a place where you're comfortable using some of these effects and techniques inside Photoshop, messing around with them and um, making designs um, all on your own and, and making them super unique. So that is it for today. Um, be sure to like, subscribe, comment below on anything you guys would like to see going forward. Um, you know, your comments are really driving this channel in a huge way. So if there's anything you guys want to see in the future from me, tutorials, questions that you have, um, definitely comment below and you can always hit me up on Instagram. It is at fuller.moe and uh, I will answer any questions that you guys have. So that is it for today. Peace.